the times we're living through, which I define as the posthuman convergence of posthumanism with post-anthropocentrism, the critique of man, of humanism, and the critique of anthropos as species, this age of convulsive changes and great contradictions calls for an ethics of affirmation, not for the rhetoric of melancholia. Affirmation is not shallow optimism, which I take as the dominant ideology of advanced capitalism, nor is it a mere psychological state. Affirmation is rather an ontological disposition towards taking in and on more of the world. A joyful ethics in Spinoza's sense of the term rests on an enlarged sense of interconnection with a multitude of human and non-human others. It is an opening up, an opening out of our relational abilities. An affirmative stance increases our ability to act and interact. A negative stance diminishes our ability to act and interact. It is one is empowering and the other one disempowering. Affirmative ethics distinguishes power relations that are empowering in the affirmative sense of the term. And this is what I call potentia, the positive face of power, from the negative sense of power as entrapment or disempowerment. This is the restrictive sense of power as potestas. Potentia and potestas, the active and the reactive or negative faces of power. Affirmation is on the side of potentia. It's associated with an ontological capacity to relate, to connect across, which means that it removes the obstacle of self-centered individualism, the bad anthropocentric habits of thought, and it encourages us to move beyond the barriers of negativity, of powerlessness, of inertia. It activates us to take in and take on more of the world. Affirmative ethics is a political praxis that assumes a new materialist philosophy, an idea of subject as embodied and embedded, relational and affective entities. It assumes a vision of mind-body continuum, nature-culture continuum, rejecting dualistic oppositions, the tendency to treat all differences as negative, as if being different was always being different from, and as if being different from a dominant norm meant to be worth less than the Eurocentric man of reason, less than sovereign anthropos in his exceptionalism. Let us instead posit all subjects along a sort of ontological pacifism, a Zoe-centered egalitarianism. We are all the same, but different in our modulations within a common matter. There is here a rejection of the dialectical oppositional way of thinking, and then joyful ethics restates an ontological continuum within which we can think of ourselves, human and non-humans, as variation within a common meta. This approach, of course, facilitates our reaching out to the multiple non-human others, and the non-human includes a multitude of entities. It encompasses the section of humanity which are not fully human, and there are many within the human species that are not enjoying full humanity. I call them the sexualized, racialized, and naturalized others, and their otherness is perceived as negative. They are worth less than the dominant vision of the subjects. Non-human in the sense of being less than human, but also other than human. The animals, the plants, the planet, more and more within our world. The technological others are sexualized, racialized others, um, and they include non-European as less than human, but also they include inorganic non-human others, algorithms, networks, the whole technological apparatus. We are living in an era also known as the fourth industrial revolution where non-humans include technological others 
as well as non-human organic others. An ethic of affirmations reaches across this categorical distinction, positing the necessity of thinking our mutual interdependence along the lines of a common nexus of mutual dependence, a relational ability to swim or sink together. And I think that what is affirmative in affirmative ethics is the ability to open up and recognize our mutual interdependence, to get out of the hierarchical, pyramid-like ways of thinking that always posit the human, the white, the European, and the male as the pinnacle at the center of everything. How about a joyful undoing of this hierarchical structure and all of these hierarchical structures, the recognition that we are all together in this very complex planetary condition, that we're in all together, although we are not all the same. We differ, but to be different from need not become immediately coded as a power differential. We are in this predicament together, but we are not one and the same. The ethics of joy, the ethics of affirmation is a process of becoming world together in a creative, collaborative mode of solidarity and interconnection. And I really think affirmation reread with Spinoza, with Deleuze, with feminist theory, with the colonial anti-racial theory, with the whole traditional environmental movements, with radical media thinking and alternative algorithms, that this affirmative mode is a way of affirming our collective ability to become, to go on and explore different ways of becoming otherwise human, human along the lines that were not predicted by the dominant paradigm and the dominant expectations. There are a multitude of ways in which we can become human and posthuman in the face of the enormous transformations of our times. But we need to do it in an ethics of generosity, of collaboration, of recognition of our mutual interdependence and great solidarity, united by a shared sense of intimacy with the world, because this is the world that we have, the best that we've been able to compose. So let's take care of it. Let's take care of each other. Affirmative ethics is a political praxis.